Hello, it's Mr. Carrington here. Welcome to this compilation video of some of my favorite DIYs on a budget. All of the DIYs you're about to see I have made with items from my local bargain store and I hope they inspire you to get creative, to get crafting. So sit back, relax and enjoy. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new here for brand new videos every single week. Thumbs up if you enjoy the DIYs and let me know which one is your favorite. Let's jump in to the first DIY and the first thing that we're going to be making is this face vase and we're going to be making it from a Lenore Unstoppables bottle but you could use any bottle that you like. <laughs> Just find a nice bottle that's got a good shape to it and that can be your starting point. So this is the air dry clay I'm using and I'm taking one of these containers and ripping the lid off to make it into a vase shape. Then I'm taking an old board and wrapping that in cling film. That's just gonna make sure that the air dry clay isn't sticking to it or sticking to the table. And then I'm using a wine bottle to roll out my clay. Of course you could use a rolling pin, but this is a tip from my good friend, Catherine at Dainty Diaries, who likes to use a nail bottle when she rolls out her clay. So I've taken a tip from Catherine and I'm using a wine bottle. And then I'm wrapping the clay around the container. I've got it to probably maybe a centimetre thick or maybe just under that and slicing off a straight line. And I'm just going in with my thumb to just kind of smooth this over so the clay will stick together quite nicely. But to make it extra smooth, you can just dip your finger or your thumb into some water and that will help to smooth it off. So now I'm just going round and where the container goes in, in the middle, you'll notice that I'm pinching in the clay now and just slicing off a bit here. So we're doing a bit of surgery on this. I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a shape now. So where it was a bit baggy, I've just snipped a bit out and again, use my thumb to seal that together. I'm just going around the top now. You can see that I'm just ripping this. You could use a knife to cut that off, but it seemed to work like that. And I'm just sort of smoothing that around to try and get a nice edge. And the same at the base as well. I'm just going around with a knife now to cut off any excess clay before going over, drawing around it in a knife to create a piece for the base. And again, just smoothing it with my thumb. And this was really enjoyable to do, really therapeutic. I went over with some more water. Now I'm drawing around a yogurt pot, most of the way around, and then a smaller glass to kind of create a face shape. So you could make this up, just use some different objects that you may have to draw around to get that nice, even curve. But any shape you like, you could go for a long face, a short face, whatever you want. And now I'm going on with a nose. Again, you don't have to do a nose, but I just thought, a nose might be quite cool. So I've kind of made a triangle shape and I'm just smoothing that off with my fingers and attaching it. I've put a bit of water on the back of it to try and hold it into place. And I thought, yeah, a long nose would be a vibe for this one. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but yeah, next up I'm making a long sausage and I'm just rolling it out with my fingers, trying to get it as even as possible. And the idea with these vases I've noticed in a lot of the ones that I've seen in stores is that the design will just be done with one line. So I'm going with that kind of concept and just using one long thin sausage of the air dry clay to create the shape of the face, if that makes sense. So I've gone on with an eye and I'm just scooping around into the lips then up the side. And that is kind of if you stick to that rule and just think you have to do your face with one piece of product or even one line of paint if you're painting it then that will make it this kind of effect and this kind of style and then I left it to dry make sure that you turn it around and let the underneath dry as well because that will need to get the air to it and then this is how it turned out so I tried some different hairstyles with my vase so we have the longer plant in here now but also you can try different things or just have it on its own let me know what you think next up we're going to be making this vase I've actually used a bottle opener for the indents on this one, but find anything around your house that could make some interesting patterns. You can always roll out your air dry clay and try pressing in a few different things to see what different effects it's made. As you will have seen, I've been using a wine bottle as a rolling pin, but I noticed that where the label is slightly raised, it also was like making some nice text as well. So you could have some fun with some different packaging as well and see what effects you can get from that too. So again, we are starting off by rolling out our clay nice and evenly 
evenly and again to maybe just under a centimeter thick but just go with whatever um, thickness you like if you want your pot to be thicker by all means go for it remember that we're going to be doing some indents in this you might want it slightly thicker this time just to allow for those indents and i'm just slicing off a straight line down the yogurt pot and then again overlapping the clay and slicing it again before using my thumbs to bring it together and to get a nice even join then again i'm cutting off the base using a knife but for this one i thought with the top i'd actually just rip it off with my thumb which created quite a nice effect it was just kind of slightly papery slightly torn looking which i thought looked quite cool but go with whatever you fancy you could do different shapes at the top you could cut it out you could even use like a cookie cutter and that sort of thing to get a nice effect on there and then i'm just going around the base again like i did before just adding another piece of clay cutting it out and then going on with a wet finger and a wet thumb just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth and then i cut a hole in the base for some drainage you don't have to do this but depending on what sort of plant you want to put in your pot you may want some drainage and then if you can find something with an interesting texture to it like i've got this bottle opener here but you could use anything that you can find from your house that has a nice texture or pattern to push into your clay to create your design. I thought the cactus might be quite cool as as you can see from my mug, I do love my cactuses. After leaving the clay to dry for 24 hours, I cut out the yogurt pot. It was quite well stuck, so maybe add some cling film to your yogurt pot before you try this one for yourself. And here's how it turned out. Next, we're gonna be making this really sweet little plant pot. I wanted something small for the desk, just something that's big enough to contain one single succulent. And I thought it'd be interesting to try out using different containers that I have already around the home. So I'm actually using a little scoop for this one, but again, you could use maybe the lid of a container or something like that to create something similar. So for this one, I'm using a scoop. I think this was from protein powder or something similar to that, but you could use any small container that you like. And I'm just rolling out the air dry clay and pushing it in using my thumb and just moving it around and ripping off the top part to make sure that it's all nicely pressed against the edges. I actually made a little hole in the base so I just went in and put some more clay in there and then once this one had dried for 24 hours I removed it from the pot and I went in with some black acrylic paint just painting on a little stripe right the way around the top to create this design and here's how it turned out. And for the last one, I'm not really sure how well this one turned out. I think it might be a little bit of a DIY fail, just in the fact that the shape isn't too great. And also, I think my painting wasn't too great as well. I think if I did this one again, I would probably print out a label for the logo and stick it on with paper, maybe do it that way. But you live and learn, don't you? So I wanted to share my not so great DIY with you as well. See what you think and maybe it's something we could try again at Christmas time because I feel like one of these would look really nice hanging on the Christmas tree. So maybe we'll come back to that one in November or December, but I'll share it with you now and you can see what you think. So for this one, I'm rolling up a piece of cardboard to create the shape for my mug. Looking back at this, I think maybe it'd be better to make this with a lid of something, maybe like a plastic lid that would actually be more of a circular shape. So yeah, maybe consider doing that if you have a go at making a mug for yourself. But I went ahead and had my roll of cardboard that I actually put some sellotape around just so it wouldn't get stuck onto the clay and then i went around and smoothed it all off so i put the base on very similar to the previous diys and then i rolled out a sausage shape to create the handle and i stuck that on by wetting the mug part and then just sort of smoothed on the handle to make sure that was nice and attached and then I went on with a lid to create the circular shape. That was just the lid of my wine bottle. And I left this one to dry for 24 hours before removing the cardboard. And then I used some acrylic paint to go on and do my Starbucks design on this one. So this is where I think I messed up a little bit. I'm not sure how good this looked. So I was thinking that you could maybe print off a sticker. I went on with a Sharpie in the end to try and add a little bit more detail and to kind of make the best I could of this. But I do think it's a bit of a mess, but there we are. We live and learn. I like to share my fails with you so that you can hopefully do it better if you have a go yourself. But I thought to jazz it up a little bit, we'd put a red ribbon on it because I feel like 
that looks like a Starbucks kind of Christmas cup then and I thought it looked quite sweet with a scrap of red ribbon that I had so yeah this is how it turned out kind of a fail but kind of sweet at the same time. If this one we're using this picture frame you could use any frame that you like but do take out the glass if it does have glass in your frame as you don't need that and then I freehand drew the face shape on using a pencil so you can draw any kind of face shape you like or you could draw any kind of design that you like it really doesn't matter just have fun with this one so I'm just going on with a freehand design then I'm following that line around with some hot glue and adding a piece of twine that I have this twine is actually just from an old planter, a hanging planter that I had and was no longer using. So I thought I would use this string, but you could use wool, string, rope, anything that you like. And just keep adding some glue along the lines that you've drawn and then bit by bit stick the rope or the twine into position. You kind of need to hold it into place and allow the glue to set as you go around. And I just continued until all of my piece of twine was used up. Next up, just take some white paint or any paint that you like. It doesn't really matter what paint you use for this. I'm actually using a primer paint and I'm adding some bicarbonate of soda to give the paint a texture. You could also try using some sand for this as well, just to give it a nice textured look. And I'm going on over all of the rope, all of the frame and all of the surround as well, just to give it a nice uniform kind of effect and to make it look a bit old, a little bit rustic and a little bit more textured. How many times am I going to say the word texture in this video? <laughs> So I kept going on with the paint and bicarbonate of soda mix until the entire frame was covered nicely. And then you can layer up and go on even thicker to add even more texture. And then to make it stand out a little bit more, I mixed in some black acrylic paint to create a gray color. And this is going on to add a little bit more of a dimension on here. So it's just giving it a little bit more depth. You can play around with this and experiment. You could do different colors if you wanted to, maybe try a terracotta as well, but this is how it turned out. So next up, you may have seen in a recent Poundland haul, I actually found some cactuses in Poundland, real cactuses as well. They have sold plastic ones in the past, but they had some real ones in store. So I wanted to make some pots and some containers to put those into, and I really liked the idea of making something that looked kind of concrete-ish. Concrete-ish, is that even a word? Anyway, let's jump into the next DIY. So for this one, I'm using this two pack of tea light holders. I think these look really nice as they are, but I wanted to change them up a little bit. So first of all, I'm going on with the white primer. Again, you could probably use any paint that you like for this, maybe some old emulsion paint you may have lying around or some acrylic paint. It's really up to you. So long as it will adhere to the surface of the candle holder, then you'll be good to go with this one. And then once they had a coat of the white paint, I mixed in some more of the black acrylic to create more of a concrete style color. So just going in to mix a nice gray color. And once I'd got a mid gray, I went in again with some more of the bicarbonate of soda or baking powder to give it a bit of a textured edge. And then just using a brush to kind of stipple it on to try and create that concrete effect. Once I'd given it a layer of the mid gray, I added a little bit more of the black paint to make it slightly darker and then went on and stippled that. And it kind of started to lift the paint away, which worked quite nicely, revealing some of the white paint underneath to make it look even more layered. Then I just left those to dry and here's how they turned out. The next one I've got for you I thought might be quite a nice gift idea. I spotted some money boxes in Poundland. I think they were part of the Mother's Day gift range. So maybe you could use one of these as a Mother's Day gift or you could use them for any gift at all because as you will see in the DIY, I've actually used some personalized sweets in this. But I actually think you could put in anything that you want to into this money box and make it your own. So you could find any objects, any memories, any personalized items and completely make this one your own. So hopefully this will just give you some inspiration 
illustration of something that you could do with it. So for this one, I'm using this Glam Fund Money Box and I started off by popping the back off. You could change the back up, but I quite liked the simple silver glitter. And then the next thing we need to do is remove all of this font that's been added with some paint. So I'm going on with a fairly blunt screwdriver. Be very careful when you do this because this is a glass piece so it could end up cracking or smashing so do be very careful and do wear gloves if you feel like you may end up breaking it just to protect your hands there but go on very gently and gently scrape away all of the paint i'm also using some nail polish remover to kind of help remove that and also a scourer you could also try some white spirit and then when you've removed all of the paint then we're going into the backing and adding our design with our personalized suite so i had these already but you could use anything that you like for this you could include some memories or some photographs even some toys or that sort of thing create your own design inside and i'm adding these with some sticky back foam these just give it a bit of a 3d effect and are nice for the suites to sit on I'm going to add them into the frame now and here's how it turned out. Next up we're going to be making a plant pot using a candle holder and you can just see it poking out in the backdrop over there. So for this one we're taking this candle holder on legs and first of all you can pop the candle holder into the freezer and then remove the wax carefully that should help you get it out and then for the legs I'm spraying them using this Rust-Oleum gold spray paint. To decorate the sides of our plant pot, you could use some paper, but I'm using some self-adhesive tile that I already had from Poundland. I thought the design on this would look quite nice. The pattern would look quite stylish. So I've gone for this, but you could use any paper, any scraps that you find in magazines, or even some fabric if you wanted to. As you can see, the sides of the pot weren't quite straight, so I had to cut out a section there just to kind of level that off, and then also trim around the edges once it was in position. I trimmed it off and made it look nice and neat and then just squeezed it back into the legs which finished it off quite nicely and here's how it turned out. And finally, we're going to be making this lamp. I really like the idea of this. It kind of reminds me of one of those lamps you'd get on like an old fashioned train carriage. Do you know the ones I mean that you'd see by the window? That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from this one. So maybe slightly art deco and using the ribbed glass as well gives off a really nice light effect. So if you put this one on your table or a coffee table or in the corner of a room at evening time, it's going to create a really lovely atmospheric effect. For this one, we're using a candlestick and also some of these push LED lights and this container for the bathroom that I think is meant to contain cotton buds and we're starting off by taking one of the LED lights and just adding the batteries to that to make sure that it's working okay I gave it a quick test and then take the lid of your cotton bud container and stick that into the candle holder so you don't have that well in there anymore and then onto that we're going to stick our LED light so don't worry about gluing this on because you can still take the top off to add more batteries as and when you need to and this will just leave enough space around that lid underneath to fit the rest of the jar perfectly it sits in there really nicely you don't even have to glue this one if you don't want to but I just wanted to make it a little bit more solid and here's how it turned out it creates some really nice effects and patterns in the evening This one I'm using these glass coasters, you get four in a pack. Next up I'm taking some gold paint, try to find some paint that's oil based, maybe test this out on the water first to make sure the paint floats. And I've heard nail varnish is really good for this technique and I picked this one up in Poundland. Then I'm going to add some of the paint into a carton of water using a paintbrush and I'm hoping it's going to float. Now let's do the same with the nail varnish. I 
And then what you can do using a cocktail stick is just drag some lines through it. Okay, that's not quite what I had in mind, but let's just go with it. Then we are going to dip one of the coasters in and hope for the best. Well, let's flip it over to dry. Why did I decide to do that one first? So I just went to the supermarket to get some nail varnish remover so my hands are clean. This I've done on a tray, by the way, just to make it a bit easier to transport it for drying purposes while we move on to the next DIY. This one I'm using this bath mat. This one comes in different colours. I've gone for the white one. And then just choose some wool in any colours that you want to use for your tassels. I've gone for this off-white, mustard and green. And then to make the tassels I've taken a notebook that I think is around the same size. You can just take anything, piece of cardboard if you like, and we're going to wrap the wool around it. you've got enough snip it off and then thread a piece through to tie it off at the top you could leave that piece in at the start actually that might be a better way to do this so tie a piece of wool around it at the top and then you can cut along the base and then just tie a piece around the top and then you can trim off the ends just to neaten those up. Repeat the same process until you've got enough tassels in each of the different colours. Take three of each of the colours and just arrange them along either side of the rug just to get the spacing right. So I'm just alternating between the colours. I'm just doing this by eye, that will do. And then using some hot glue I'm going to go ahead and stick them all the way along just by pushing um, all the bobbly bits back out of the way and attaching them to the edging here. You could of course sew these but I'm just a bit short of time today. repeat on the other side but with a slightly different um, formation I think so I'm going to start with orange rather than white and go from there
container I'm using one of these metal pen pots and I've also got some cord here. This came from an old drawstring sports bag that had seen better days so I thought rather than throw it away I would use this. To start with I'm going to glue the end into the base with some hot glue just to keep that secure and then we're going to start weaving this around. So just go around winding it over and under, pulling it tight as you go. It is a bit fiddly to start with just because the cord is so long, but as it gets shorter, hopefully this will get slightly easier. And then when you get back to the start, skip two so that then it's going to alternate. So you're going to be going under where before you went over. Keep pushing it down as you go. So this one's come to an end, so I'm just gonna glue the end of that one inside to keep it secure and out of the way. And I'm going to start the next one next to it, and I'll glue the end of that one in place as well. go. As you can see I've gone a little bit off piste at the top but um, that's simply because I was struggling to get the cord into the holes as it was uh, nearing the top but I think that looks quite nice. I'm just going to snip the end off and secure that in place with one more blob of glue. And then to finish it, I'm going to take one of these artificial plants that you can pick up in Poundland and pop it inside. And there we go. This one, I'm going to take one of these hanging planters and some of this twine, which I also picked up in Poundland that matches the a string that it's hanging from already. And then using the trusty notebook again, I'm going to make some more tassels. This time I'm going to go around the shorter section of the notebook. I'm going to take a longer piece of string and add it to them and then wrap it around like this. Just give it a bit more detail and then just loop that off by looping it around and pulling it through itself and secure that nice and tight. Now taking the twine, I'm going to start to wind it around the pot. I think I'm going to start down here, so leave the uh, white section up top. So I'm just going to add a little blob of glue just to get it going. And then we just need to start to wind it around, just gluing it as we go. going to knot on each of the tassels onto the strings here. And there we go. And you can finish it by placing in one of the artificial cactuses that you can get in the store. This one I'm going to take one of these hanging light bulbs that you may have seen in previous videos and this glass jar that says homemade on it. <coughs> so first of all I'm going to drill a hole into the lid. Just be careful when you do this it may get quite sharp. Wear goggles. And I'm 
going to do the same thing again. And then one more. If you do have a bigger drill bit, that would be more efficient way of doing it. But as I don't, I'm just doing what I can with what I've got. And then we just simply need to thread this through. Do be careful, as I said, because there is some sharp edges in there. And then I'm going to try and push this into the hole that I've made just to try and kind of get it nice and even. And then we just need to pop that into the jar. That's really done. And there we go. And you just need to pull it to switch the light on. I'm going to take four of these heavy duty hanging brackets that I picked up in the garden section. These are great because they already come with screws. And I've got an old crate here. You could pick one of these up from maybe a charity shop or even have a look in some skips or you could maybe ask at your local wine merchants and then we'll drill some holes into this section. So as you can see, there are some nails already. So I'm just gonna have to work around those. I'm gonna bring the legs quite far forward. Would that look all right? Yeah. I'm just using one as a guide. Now I've got the marks, I can go ahead and drill in a little bit further. Today's DIY is an anthropology inspired one. We're going to be making a pom-pom wreath. So what you do is you just open up these two sides and then all you want to do is wrap your wall around each side like this. So I like to start down at the one end, the far end, so that you get this part locked together nicely and then you just work backwards. So you just keep going, winding the wool around, and the thicker you wind this wool, the thicker or the fluffier your pom-pom's going to be. So it's going to be fuller the more wool you wrap around. You need to definitely at least cover this so you can't see the pom-pom maker underneath, but I would encourage you to go back over and do at least one more layer, maybe even two. So just keep winding it until you've definitely covered everything. And as I say, the thicker you go, the fuller your pom-pom's going to be. And I'm shooting this one in real time for you. Often I'll give you a little time lapse, but I just wanted to give you the actual kind of live experience, <laughs> if we can call it that, of how long this is going to take you to make one pom-pom and then you can sort of get an idea as to how long this project's going to take you because I feel like I've been making pom-poms for hours. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but it's a great thing that you can do while you've got the radio on or maybe when you're watching the television, but maybe it's not the sort of program that you need to give too much attention to, because you will need to glance down every now and then. But to be honest, once you've got the winding started, you're off. And so you don't really need to be looking down too much. You can kind of feel your way around it. So again, I'm gonna go right to the end, and then we're gonna work back on this, just to make it a little bit thicker. Hello, the reef base is creeping in. <laughs> He's saying, stick them to me. I will be shortly, mate. I literally can't wait for that bit. I hope I've made enough because I've already made a few. So this really is the last one that I'm planning on making, just the demonstration for you. And then we're gonna stick them all on in a minute. So that's what you do. So you end up with the two pieces like that. 
and then you fold them back in. So you fold them back in like that, and then you take a pair of scissors. I really need to buy some new scissors, these aren't the sharpest, but you go in and then you cut round like this. You could probably do with some with a slightly more pointed tip just to get in there would be handy but I mean these do the job so you get the idea which is the main thing. Now the good thing about these kits as well as there not being any waste with the wool what you can do is if you've got any friends or family that want to help you you can distribute the other three and get them cracking on some others so you can get a bit of help <laughs> because you're gonna be there a while making these pom-poms so the more help you can get with it the better so next all we need to do is cut a piece of wool off and that is just to tie around so you go in on it so can you see that so in that crack there you just put the wool through and then you tie it nice and tightly but don't pull too tight so that the wool snaps but you want to feel it gathering it in and you'll see these start to move a little bit so you know that's tight enough and I'm going to go back around again and knot it again just to make sure it's extra secure and one more time just back around and knot that off and this time I'm going to do a double knot as well just to make sure that is really really secure like so and then just these little bits of excess there, we're going to trim those off so they're the same length as the rest of it. And then you open up the two sides like that and like that. And then you pull this piece off so it sits on a pin. And then you can take the pom pom off and put this back together again. And that's ready for the next one now. And then all you need to do is just fluff that out a little bit. And that, I think if you roll them as well, it kind of helps. There you go. So there is one pom-pom of many. <laughs> so you repeat that with different colored walls, different sizes, keep going until you've got enough. And what you can do is take your wreath base and just keep checking by arranging them all the way around it to see if you've got enough. Keep going until you do, and then we're gonna get the glue gun out. going to need to make a lot so good thing to do on these winter evenings I've got my glue gun at the ready by the way they've got glue guns coming into Lidl I think they will be in the week that you're watching this for $7.99 and also you can pick up a small one in Poundland for two pounds I believe they are or they might be five pounds but Yes, you can pick up a glue gun in store. As you can see, I've put some cardboard down. You know what I'm like when it comes to gluing things to the table. We may glue the wreath to this cardboard, but it's not gonna be the end of the world if we do that. I'm just gonna start off by just going on with a little bit of glue. Not too much. You don't wanna to do too much because it can melt the polystyrene. And then we'll start off around the edges with the larger ones. And I think what I'm gonna do is just sort of keep picking them out and alternating them as we go around. So I may have to time lapse this a little bit or we could be here all day. <laughs> that's the first layer on and now we're just going to work our way in from there. Just 
just check that these are all all right yeah that one's that one's still wet so i probably shouldn't have lifted it <laughs> i won't touch it they're all good so next up i think let's go in with i don't know where to go next really do we go like that let's just start <laughs> i've got no idea how to go about this now we'll just start and hope for the best so we're going on really at the top next Now as you can see it's getting nice and full so now we're just basically trying to look for little gaps find a little gap to get some glue into and then just push them right in so it's going to be nice and packed Now this one here is one where I actually ran out of the white wool so I wrapped the other half of the pom-pom maker in the blue wool and I wish I'd actually done more like this because I think it looks so brilliant. It also gave me the idea that you could of course double your wool and then wrap it around so you could end up with like a two-tone pom-pom. So something to experiment with. And there we go. And I actually think this might be one of my favorite DIYs that I've ever made. This is so close to the original and we're looking at saving about 80 pounds <laughs> if you DIY it. And then to finish it, I'm going to use some of this cord that I actually picked up in a charity shop, but I'm sure you could find some of this online. If not, take some of your wool and just wrap it around a rolled up piece of fabric, wind it all the way around and glue it. I just think a chunky loop is going to really add to the chunky effect on this. Normally I wouldn't worry too much about what we're hanging it with, but I am going with the inspiration of the Anthropology one, which had a chunky loop. So I'm going to take a piece of this, enough so it's going to show. So we want quite a decent piece, I'll cut that off. And then let's decide what the top's going to be. I like the two-tone one, so I think I'm going to make that the top. So for this one, we're going to take one of these signs. This one says, some days you just have to create your own sunshine, but we're gonna change this up. So first of all, I'm going to snip the tag off and then we're going to give this a coat of paint. You can use whatever paint you like. I'm just going to use a little tester pot of emulsion in the color white clay. And I'm going to set that to dry. As you can see, it hasn't quite covered it, so this will probably need a second or third coat. So now that this has dried and I put a second coat of paint on, I'm going to take two of these spice racks and add them onto the front. I think we can lose the um, hinges on the back, actually, because we're just going to glue this on. And then starting at the base, we're just going to glue that one in place. And these ones do fit perfectly, so you don't need to um, trim the sign at all. Mm -hmm. 
And now this one's dry, we're going to take another one and glue it onto the base of that one upside down like that. If you wanted some extra strength, you could um, add some screws into here, but I think the glue should be enough for the amount of weight that we'll be putting on this one. This one I'm starting off with one of these wooden serving boards. I'm just going to give it a really light coat of emulsion. So I've got some grey paint here as well. This is um, chalk paint. I'm just going to mix a bit of that with the white and give it a bit more interest. And now what I'm doing is just dabbing on the white and the grey just in different sections just to kind of make it look a little bit concretey, I guess. And if you use a piece of cardboard to paint on, it's really easy then to put it somewhere to dry. You can just lift the whole thing up. So now that that has dried, I'm going to take my Dymo label maker and write out a quote. I've just had a quick look online and picked one that I liked. And now I'm going to line them up and stick them into position. So just roughly space them out where you think they should go. Just gonna eyeball it, hope for the best as always. And there you go. And feel free to let me know in the comments what your superpower is. For this one, we're going to take these metal canisters. So we'll start off by removing the lids. And then I'm going to masking tape off the lower section. Just line it up to the dent. And take the tape all the way around. And a little tip for you when you get to the end, if you rip it off, just fold yourself a piece over like that so that you can easily pull it off afterwards. And then just go around and really make sure that that's all sealed because we don't want any of the paint to bleed through. And then we're just going to paint this lower section a contrasting colour, so I'm going to stick with the grey that I've been using. The paint has now dried on our tin so we can remove the masking tape. Oh, it has bled a little bit. <laughs> Whoops. I'm not sure how. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Never mind. We'll have to go with it. Yeah, you might want to use some frog tape instead of masking tape. I'll go around and tidy that up. <laughs> These things happen. I want to be honest with you. It's not always perfect, but you know, we're just having a bit of fun with this. So let's see how this one's done. Better? Interesting. Maybe it was the direction that I was painting. Maybe this tape's just rubbish. Maybe don't use Poundland masking tape for this. If that happens to you as well, you can just go around and use the edge of a credit card or a membership card and just tidy that up. And now we can add some labels to these. So I'm going to do one for coffee. For this I'm going to use four of these metal brackets. These are for hanging up 
um, hanging baskets and things like that. They're called wall brackets and they'll come from the garden section. These are the 12 inch ones. And you may find that you're able to use these screws as well. And then for the tabletop, I've got a piece of plywood here that I salvaged from a skip. You can use any piece of wood that you like or you could use an old wooden tray. And then you just wanna make sure that you'll be able to fit all the legs um, onto it so that um, yeah they can point towards the middle like that and before I put the legs on I'm just going to give it a sand with a sanding block and then with the longest part on the outer corner just go in at a diagonal from the corner and mark the holes And I'm just gonna drill each of these. Give those a little sand off. I'm just gonna go in and screw on the brackets. Just be careful that your screws obviously aren't longer than the depth of the wood. Oh, I've done it the wrong way around. Okay. That's why it wasn't lining up properly. Always check first. <sighs> right, do that again. And there we have it. That is pretty much done. So that will stand up like so. This you'll need one of these non-stick pizza trays with the holes in it and a couple of these steel hooks that you can get from the garden section. And you will need a length of wood. I'm just using this length of plywood that I rescued from a skip. But yeah, you can just use any length of wood that you like and it can be as tall or short as you want. So I'm gonna start off by giving this a sand down. First of all, I'm just going to add a hook to the top so that we can hang this up. You might want to use a bracket for this as well, depending on where you're going to be hanging this. And then decide where you want your mirror to go and just um, place the pizza tray into position and just eyeball it to get it into the middle. The sticker on the back actually helps for this and we're not gonna see any of this, so don't worry about the sticker staying on there. You can see I'm kind of counting the holes at the sides as well, just to see if they roughly match up. Okay, I think we're good. And then what you wanna do is just drill in a couple of holes and then add some screws just to hold this into position. Okay, so I think I've screwed this to the table. <laughs> I have screwed this to the table. Take two and don't forget to measure your screws against the wood to make sure they're not going to come out the other side. And then just below it, I'm positioning the hooks into place. So I'm just going to add those on now. Next, we're going to take one of the circular mirrors that you can find in the wedding section and we're going to glue it onto here. So I'm just going to go on with some hot glue. I'm just gonna go straight on into the center with it and just apply gentle pressure onto the center to hold it into place while it dries. And that's it, so all you need to do now is hang it up. So, you've got no problem inserting the canes.
For this one, I'm taking this stag frame that was in the 25p sale in Poundland, and I'm going to pop the back off first of all. I'm going to use this as a guide just to draw around on some paper that I picked up in Paper Chase. You could use any wrapping paper that you like, or even scraps from magazines or fabric. And then using some decoupage glue, you could use PVA or some Pritt stick for this, I'm sure. I'm just gonna um, use this to stick the paper over the existing print. Are you gonna show through? Well, let's turn that around. <laughs> And then you could paint the frame, but I quite like the grey, so I'm going to leave that how it is. And I'm going to pop this back inside. I've actually turned this over because this was showing through the paper, so rather than um, worrying about that, I've just flipped it over. And I'm just gonna put a tiny blob of glue into each corner just to secure it into place. You could staple this. So that's on. Paper's gone a bit squiffy, but that's all right. We won't worry about that. And then just using a tiny bit of hot glue on the base of the rabbit, I'm going to attach this rabbit on that I picked up in Home Bargains. For the bunting, I'm taking a couple of strips of the paper and I'm just gonna fold them up like a concertina to duplicate the egg shapes that I'm going to be drawing onto it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it roughly to the size that I want the eggs to be. And then onto that, I'm going to draw an egg shape. Oh, oh, how's that happened? <laughs> Why are these bits? Oh, those are shorter. I forgot that strip was shorter. What should we do? Let's just stick those on. That'd be all right. In fact, that'd be better. We'll just pretend that that was meant to be. What I'm going to do though, is just tear sections of the pink as it's too small and lay it over the speckled. And I think that'll look quite cool. Next I'm gonna take some of these wooden pegs that I picked up in Poundland and a length of twine and hot glue these onto the twine and then attach the eggs all the way along it. Don't forget to tie a loop in one end so you can hang it up and leave a bit of excess. For this I'm taking some polymer clay or FIMO and I'm going to take some white and also some pink and blue and just start by warming it up by rolling it into a big sausage. And then what I want to do is create some marble effects between the different colors. So I'm going to take some of the white and just add, so roll that up into a sausage and then I think just add a tiny bit of blue to begin with. So 
I'm going to do a thinner sausage and then I'm going to intertwine the two together. So I'm going to get that, well, it's more like a worm, isn't it? And we're just going to wind those around each other like this. And then just twist it and then I'm going to roll that and then I'm going to fold that in half and twist it again and then we're going to roll that out and keep going with this technique until you've got the marble pattern that you like and once you've got your effect that you're happy with, we can then create some egg shapes. So I'm going to separate this. So start by rolling it into a ball and I'm just going to squash it down and then pinch it slightly at the top to make it a bit more of an egg shape. And I've actually used a similar technique to create some drink stirrers for Molly Makes magazine. So once that article is out, I'll be sure to share it on my Instagram and I'll let you know on here as well. So I've done exactly the same with the pink and now I've just rolled it out and flattened it out into an egg shape and I'm going to put these in the oven as per the instructions which I think is half an hour and then let them cool down and they'll be good to stick on. For this I'm going to take one of these arrows that I picked up in Poundland, I think this was in the sale as well, and start by snipping the tag off. So now these have been in the oven and they've cooled down, I'm just going to hot glue them onto the arrow and I made a few small ones with what was left over. And there we go.